Hello and welcome to the allure of fashion and the intrigue of great books. Today's episode features clutch situations, shouldered treasures, toted goodies, dangling wristlets, minis, and more as we talk about the delights, memories, and spirits of purses. I'm your host, Wendy Kendall. The result of my love of fashion and especially my passion for purses, mystery, and romance are the books I've authored in the intriguing In Pursuit Mysteries. Cat Out of the Bag introduces Katherine Watson, purse designer, sleuth. As Catherine moves from designer bags to body bags, she's uncovering clues to a murder. The prequel, Purse Stachio Makes a Splash, delves into a chilling cold case. Finalist for Best Romantic Suspense at Killer Nashville, Snow Kiss Cookies to Die For creates a tangle of mystery and love. A summer read that will keep you on the edge of your beach towel, Cherry Shakes in the Park blends danger, divas, and frothy delights. And ribbons of love run through Heart of Christmas Cookies and Dreams. Thank you so much to all the readers who've told me how much they've enjoyed my books. After we go in pursuit of fashion, please check my website, wendywritesbooks.com. Kimberly Bear is an award-winning author who wrote her first story at age six. It was about a baby chick that hatched out of a little girl's Easter egg after somehow surviving the hard boiling process. Nowadays, she writes mostly middle grade and young adult fiction. She lives in Virginia, where she likes to go power walking on days when it's not too hot, not too cold, too rainy, too snowy, or too windy. On indoor days, you might find her binge watching one of her favorite TV shows, Gilmore Girls, Friends, or The Office. Kimberly Bear writes in a variety of genres, including adult romantic suspense, young adult, and middle grade. Welcome, Kimberly Bear, in pursuit of fashion and fiction. Thanks, Wendy. I'm so happy to be here on your wonderful blog. You know, I was just remembering how a while back you and I did an interview swap where your character, Amber, from Out of the Bag, Cat Out of the Bag, interviewed my character, Libby, from my, my book, The Haunted Purse, and then vice versa, my character interviewed your character on my website blog. And I thought that was such a fun project. You just have the best ideas. Those characters got along so well, too. It was really they fun. Did. Yeah, they were both in college, so they had things in common. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, Kim, your paranormal YA novel, The Haunted Purse, was a third place winner in 2021 National Excellence in Storytelling Contest in the YA novel category. Wow, that is really something. I just want to mention that readers have found that young adult books are not just a great read for young adults. They're wonderful for adults of all ages, and I definitely agree. In The Haunted Purse, your character, Libby Dawson, finds out the old denim purse she bought at the thrift store isn't your run-of-the-mill teenage tote. It's a bag of secrets imbued with supernatural powers. Strange items keep turning up inside, clues to a decades-old mystery that only Libby can solve. Can you start us off, Kim, by telling us a little about Libby? Sure. So Libby is 15. She's pretty and smart, but that's really all she has going for her. She was born out of wedlock to a teen mother. She has no idea who her father is. She lives alone in the inner city because her mother is shacking up with a boyfriend. So the fact that she lives alone is her biggest secret because she knows if Child Protective Services got wind of that, they would whisk her off to foster, foster care. But really, though, her circumstances work in her favor as she tries to solve the mystery of the haunted purse. She doesn't have anybody telling her to be home by nine or grounding her for a week. So she can play Nancy Drew to her heart's content. So advantages and disadvantages. <laughs> now, can you describe this special haunted purse to us? And what was it that drew Libby to choose it at the thrift store? And when did she start to discover its unique powers? Okay, so it's a denim purse. It's almost big enough to qualify as a tote bag, 
and it has a lot of different compartments inside. So there's decorative embroidery on the front and two pockets on the back that look like the butt pockets of a pair of jeans. Initially, she just liked the way the purse looked, but it was actually more than that. She felt inexplicably drawn to it. And she discovered its power shortly after she bought it when things that had been in the purse started disappearing. At first she thought she just misplaced them, but then when it started happening more frequently and when strange objects started turning up in the purse, she knew something really supernatural was going on. Well, my amateur sleuth, Catherine Watson in Cat Out of the Bag is very detailed and particular about the designs of her purses. And I love the way that you design, that you uh, describe that purse because I could really visualize it. Catherine Watson's attention to detail turns out to be helpful in detecting clues. And the type of bag that a person carries also indicates personality traits that Catherine analyzes. My research about designers and about the history of purses has been just a fun hobby, along with my vintage and contemporary purse collection. And all that inspired my first novel. Is there a real purse that inspired you to write this story, The Haunted Purse, or something else? Uh, what was your favorite part of writing this story? Okay. Oh, yeah. This was inspired by a real purse. Okay. So what happened was um, I had taken my son to for a college visit. We went to this college that was three hours away from our house, and we had a nice tour. We had this, this nice gentleman took us around. And it was time to go home and I, I reached in my purse for my keys and they weren't there. I always kept them in the same compartment, but they just weren't there. So I looked in all the other compartments and, you know, looked by the car and just couldn't find my keys. So we went back to the tour guide and told him I lost my keys and, you know, asked if they had shown up in the lost and found. He said, he said no. So he mobilized a whole bunch of students to just walk around the campus looking for my keys. So this was going on for 10 or 15 minutes. And then I thought, well, I'll just look in my purse one more time. And well, guess what? There were the keys in my purse. <laughs> they were in a compartment where I didn't usually keep them, but I looked in all the compartments. I swear I did. So I had to go back to the tour guide, you know, very humble. And guess what? I found them. You know, sorry. Thanks. Bye. And we, we hightailed it out of there. And all the way home, I kept thinking about that. Like, how could I be such an idiot? The keys were in there the whole time. And then I started thinking, well, maybe something else was going on. Maybe some otherworldly being cranked me by hiding my keys. And I thought, I like that because in that version, I wasn't an idiot. And then later I started thinking, hmm, a haunted purse, that might be a good idea for a story. So that's where that idea came from. And the, I guess the most fun part of the story to write were just the parts where Libby started realizing something was going on because it was fun to describe that sense of, what the heck is going on here that I felt? <laughs> so you could really, you could really describe it. That's fantastic. Yeah. I yeah. love that. Well, Libby has a best friend, Tony. Can you tell us about her and their friendship and also Tony's reaction to the haunted purse? So Tony and Libby have grown up together in the inner city. Um, they're best friends, but they don't always get along. Later in the story, Tony does something that devastates Libby, and she finds it hard to forgive. As for Tony's reaction to the purse, Tony's very practical. So at first, she doesn't believe that anything supernatural is going on. It's only when she sees for herself that something weird is happening that she finally acknowledges that the purse has powers. Ah. As an author, what is very important when writing a paranormal novel? I think that writing a paranormal novel is kind of similar to writing science fiction. You're not actually creating a science around the scenario, but it all has to be plausible. It has to seem like something that could actually happen. So, for instance, in my story, the purse feeds off Libby's belief, belief in it, kind of like Tinkerbell and Peter Pan. Um, and its powers grow stronger as the story progresses. So I had to figure out what that escalation would look like each step of the way and make it believable. Would you treat our listeners to a reading from your book, The Haunted Purse? Sure, I'd be happy to. I have it right here. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. okay, so this is after after Libby realized something supernatural was going on. And 
And Tony finally agreed that there was. Tony asked, do you think we should tell my mom about the purse? No, I said. I wasn't ready to trust an adult, not even Tony's mom, nice as she was. Your mom is like you, I added, practical. It would take a long time to convince her there's something supernatural going on. We went back to watching the purse. There was a moment when I thought I saw it twitch, but that might have been my imagination. You could always get rid of it, Tony said. You know, donate it back to the thrift store. I considered that. I could, but I don't want to. Not yet, anyway. This purse is the coolest thing I've ever owned. I want to find out more about it. I want to see what it does next. She took her eyes from the purse long enough to glance at me. Aren't you afraid it'll crawl into your bed some night and strangle you with its straps? No, I think it's trying to get my attention. It's trying to tell me something. Like what? I didn't have a clue. That purse is another character. It's just amazing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> I, lo I love that. That was a super reading. I just oh, love it. You. Yeah. I, if I hadn't read the book already and enjoyed it so much, I'd be hooked. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Libby is a very courageous person. As she desperately tries to solve this mystery, she learns life lessons from her haunted purse experience. Can you tell us what's important for the author when writing a mystery? Okay, I think Writing mysteries can be challenging because you want to put clues in this story, but you don't want to be obvious to the point where everybody quickly figures out what's going on. And by the way, I think you did a great job of that with Cat Out of the Bag. There were clues, but you also threw in a lot of red herrings, and I did not figure out who the killer was. Oh, thank you. That's really nice. Well, when it comes to my favorite subject purses, it is so hard for me to choose a favorite purse. I like so many different styles and colors for different events, activities, outfits, and even moods. So many people, one of their favorite purses is because it reminds them of a loved one. One of mine like that is, I'm going to show it to you, this beautiful, let's see if you can see it. Oh. Isn't wow gorgeous with That's this gorgeous look at this chain oh yeah very fancy and opens up to a satin interior oh that is beautiful and i not only love the look but i also because i love it because it was my mother's what she called dressy purse oh. And I remember her dressing up for fun dates with my dad or for family occasions with this purse just sparkling. So, wow, so that looks like new. Yeah. Yes, it's treasured. <laughs> Another fun coincidence with my mom is that one of her favorite purse designers was Prada. And that's one of my favorites, too. So I wanted to ask you, what is your own favorite purse to carry? And maybe do you have a favorite design or designer or do you have some kind of sentimental attachment? Yeah. Well, I'm not quite as knowledgeable about purses as you are, oh. but I, I do have one. I happen to have it right here with me. This one, it's it was just a cheap purse that I got from one of those catalogs that you get around Christmas time. But it has all these cute little kitties all over it. Oh. And I always get compliments when I take this one out. So that's, that's just adorable. like my kind of whimsical first purse. And then um, my daughter-in-law had gotten me this one. It's a Michael Kors purse. Oh. And it's a little a little fancier. Like I, I use this one when I have some kind of special event. And it has a detachable shoulder strap. So I can either hold it in my hand or sling it over my shoulder. Beautiful. So I, like I won't share my day-to-day -day purse because it's, it's very, very boring, very plain. So, <laughs> so my day-to-day -day ones are also kind of worn. <laughs> um Kim tell me what is a fun fashion outfit or accessory that you've either found at or donated to a thrift shop and any paranormal vibes with those <laughs> well that purse I told you about earlier the one that inspired my story I did eventually donate that to a thrift shop 
So if it truly was haunted, that's somebody else's problem now. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, I have kind of a fun story about a 1950s teenager's purse. Um, I'm going to credit this story to Amanda Jackson at CNN, who wrote this up. Um, I've just taken some excerpts from it. Um, this is a 1950s teenager's purse that was found in 2019. It had been lost all that time. The purse was covered in dust and found in a space between a locker and a wall in an Ohio middle school. When it got cleaned off, it was a nice red shoulder bag. It was discovered by Chaz Pyle, a custodian at North Canton Middle School, when he was reattaching the trim to the lockers. After posting pictures on social media, the school district investigated further and found that it had belonged to a former student, Patty Rumfoya, who lost it in 1957. She unfortunately passed away in 2013, but the school was able to give the purse and its contents to her children. What a delight. Patty's five children had a family gathering to open the purse and glimpse into their mother's life as a teenager. And they shared their joy. They told everybody inside was a comb, some makeup, including powder and lipstick in the shade of pastel pink, her library card, a YMCA membership card, and uh, American Junior Red Cross. And there were also several black and white photos of family and friends and a photo of a dog. <laughs> On the back of one photo was written, Patty, good luck to a sweet girl and friend from Bonnie. And there was also a school football schedule and she had marked off some of the games. There was also 26 cents. So each of the five children kept one of the wheat pennies as a special remembrance of their mom and her beloved purse. <laughs> wow, that, that would have been like a time capsule. you know? Isn't that something? Yeah, it is like a time capsule. You're right. Yeah, and Patty had graduated from the school district and went on to have a teaching career in addition to being a loving wife and mother. So not a haunted purse, but certainly one filled with spirit. <laughs> oh, I love that story. <laughs> you know, Kimberly, I tell you, I love carrying a big bag. I am a big bag girl. But recent years, I've noticed young adults are carrying small accessories and wristlets. Um, and current fashion trends are continuing that young adult preference for mini purses, just the right size for the necessities, phone, wallet, and lip balm. <laughs> but there are a couple of other trending styles they're liking too. Cross bodies are popular, especially for physical activities where they want to be hands-free. And the other trend, especially in the summer, is market bags, the collapsible totes. And I think it's because they're so easily stored and they carry lots of stuff for summer activities, like if you're going to the beach and so forth. Do you, Kim, have a fun story about a fashion trend that you once followed? Well, this story will probably date me, but let's just say that at an unspecified time in the past, balloon sleeve blouses were all the rage. So they, but, you know, these big, huge, like they were like balloons, really. And I had one with pleated sleeves, so it was really balloony. And those sleeves were so big that they would constantly catch on doorknobs when we'd be walking past doors. I'd be walking along and I'd get jerked back by my sleeves. So around the same time, bell bottoms were in style and some of them were really wide at the bottoms. And if I walked too fast, they'd flap around my ankles and ankles and trip me. So between the doorknob thing and the tripping, it was not a good time. So fashion can be dangerous. <laughs> That's excellent. <laughs> Well, Kim, thank you so much for sharing this fashion and fiction fun with us. But can you tell us what's coming up next for your readers to look forward to? 
Sure. Well, two things. First of all, I just wanted to mention that my book, The Haunted Purse, is currently featured in the Hauntingly Goodreads Book Fair on Book Funnel, which is going on till July 18th. So the fair offers dozens of books in a variety of genres like romance, thriller, cozy mystery, mine's a young adult, but the common theme is ghosts. I have the link to the book fair on my website, KimberlyBear.com, as well as in my social media posts on Instagram and Twitter. And it's worth checking out. There are dozens of great books on there. The second, my newest novel will be coming out later this year. It's another young adult paranormal. This one is about astral travel and it's called Out of Body. A teenage girl named Abby starts having involuntary out of body experiences and gets into all kinds of trouble as a result. The tagline is, astral travel is amazing if you survive the trip. So I recently put a book trailer on YouTube. I haven't announced it to the world yet, so it's still kind of a secret. But if you go to YouTube and search out of body book trailer, it'll come up in the results and you can take a sneak peek. Fantastic. Thanks for breaking the news here. <laughs> I'm very excited. I can't wait to read that one. Thank you, Kimberly. And listeners, you will want to check out the website, KimberlyBear.com. It's spelled out in the description below and see her interesting blog and find out more about all of her books. And you're invited to my website, WendyWritesBooks.com, also to explore more on fashion and fiction. Thank you, listeners, for joining us. Be sure to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. And join me next time for the allure of fashion and the intrigue of great books.